Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be blasting Australia's Pustulence with the birth of the beginning before the inception of the end on the mighty Rotted Life Records. Rotted number 26. First off, just look at that gorgeous slip art which is also on the regular cover. Badass logo. Although I swear there's a band on Dark Descent that has a very similar logo to where I thought they were paying homage. I'm not really sure though. I can't remember the band's name. I want to say Death Vomit, but I'm not sure and it doesn't really matter because Pustulence, they have their own fucking logo. It just reminded me of another logo. And, I mean, it's death metal. There's so many bands with logos that just look like somebody threw up on a t-shirt. And I think that's fucking awesome, honestly. But, at the same time, I love stuff like this. Just, you know, adding skulls in and stuff. I think it's fucking sick. Having a good band logo is honestly important. I mean, for some bands, it's not. They could just have a fucking sigil, and that's it. And it's like, you know by that sigil, like, okay. Sometimes that could be, you know, your quality control mark. As soon as you see that, it's like, oh. Because I was very surprised that Necrot did not use the Demon Gram on Mortal. I thought it was just weird. I mean, outside of the logo, and I, I'm i pretty sure it's on the logo. No, it's not. For some reason, I thought that pentagram for, had the demon gram. That's my mistake. So yeah, the first Necrot record without this bad boy. And again, to me, this, you know, it's kind of a seal, like, on Blood Offerings, it was on the actual LP, the way it is on the Labyrinth compilation. Like this. Like, just the fact that a band has a logo is a big fucking deal, like... And this is clear vinyl, in case you care. But, um... Yeah, Mortal was the first Necrop full-length that did not utilize the demon gram at all and I just thought that was kind of weird because that's such a fucking cool logo seriously look at that thing like actually having a symbol that you know s stands for what your band is like to me Necrot has one of the best in the business like right now because we could always just go back to the Bathory Goat like, come on. That, to me, is, like, the epitome of having not only a band mascot, but your own band's logo, technically. Which, I mean, obviously, Bathory only used it for a couple records, pretty much, and that was it. But I thought it was just cool that still, like, when you think of proto-black metal, you think of the Bathory Goat. Especially that yellow Bathory goat for some of you. But, anyways, that's enough about fucking logos and shit like that. What really matters here is how good this fucking demo is. And this photo is of a three-piece, but... Pustulence is a four-piece. And I didn't look what other projects these guys are in, but I'm guessing they're in some other projects. We have Sean on bass, Earl on drums and keyboards, Taylor on vocals and guitars, and Anthony on leads. Cover and title by Oscar Bonin. Design and layout, Justin Stubbs. Logo by Katie Whitelaw. Whitlaw. Awesome, awesome stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And what we get is some fucking killer death metal at the end of the day. 
parts on here sound like fucking suffocation and that's always a good thing when you know utilized correctly and here I really like how they go into like a suffo part because it comes out of fucking nowhere it's not like this starts off with like you know straight up suffocation worship this is definitely death metal rooted in the days of past but there's just a couple songs on here that have like suffo vibes but one I don't know the name of it off the top of my head I was in the shower and uh, when it came on I was like fuck I forget what song this is like god damn it this is why I should make notes but like it went into this like kind of suffocation breakdown part and I was just like that that was fucking cool like it just sounded super cool and I just really like how this recording sounds and they have a full length coming later on this year if it's anything like this demo it's gonna be a fucking banger and again rotted life fucking hails to Jason for just having his ear to the extreme metal underground especially with death metal like coming from the Australian scene like to me they have you know one of the gnarlier scenes in the world like but be sure to add pestilence into that fucking scene because this is a total banger listen whole song is awesome. I had to turn it down. I don't want to spoil this one. It's a fucking ripper. Straight through. Every song on here is fucking killer death metal. 
Pustilence, the birth of the beginning before the inception of the end. Wow. Seriously, wow. I'm surprised there are still copies of this available. CD and cassette. I highly recommend getting a copy of this beast. And I am still working on getting data storage for this phone. I'm sorry, I know I can't edit and it really is a bummer because I don't like these videos kind of just looking thrown together and raw. These do take time and you know, I'm not going off a script so I could fuck up one line and have to go all the way back to the beginning. But I really want you ladies and gentlemen to get into Pustilence. Like, absolutely, fucking lootly And check in below in the comments and let me know what you think of this bad boy. Because I think this is one of those demos that's like... Just super on top of shit. Like, the technicality, it's... A perfect balance, almost. Like, because it's... Kind of a technical release. But at the same time, very accessible. Let's not... What's he... That's awesome. Like, you got the heavy riffs. The solos, it's blistering fucking guitar heavy death metal. From the pits of Australia. Program repeats on both sides. The birth of the beginning before the inception of the end. I mean, fuck yeah. Seriously, fuck yeah. Pustilence from Australia on the mighty Rotted Life Records. Once again, hitting a goddamn death metal home run with the birth of the beginning before the inception of the end. And you have Gateways to Enigma 1, Unto a Pandemonium 2, Journey to the Altar of the Unknowns, and Dissolute Delirium number 3. I think that one track is an instrumental. Yes, it is. Journey to the Altar of the Unknowns. Very cosmic and cool in that aspect. And just in general, like, a lot of the lyrics are, you know, mangled, perceptions warped, bodily twisted, grotesque, deliration obtained. Warp fire consumes the flesh. Phantasm reality altered, shifts and oppositions, gateways rift, galaxies bleed, souls devoured by the portal. So, some cosmic death metal here. Really cool stuff. Organic lands darkened and shroud, twisted realm of disarray from its core birth of decay. Fuck yeah. Forbidden, though, is it to obtain such power. Forfeits the soul in return. Crimson runes protect, project the insanity written. Speak the words. Invoke the elders. So it seems like Pustilence love themselves some weird fiction... Maybe not Lovecraft, maybe Lovecraft. I mean, when it comes to weird fiction and the Cthulhu, Cthulhu mythos, you know, it really depends which author you want to read, but, you know, it all starts with uh, H.P. Lovecraft, I guess. Who is a racist? But, you know, it is what it is. It's, you know. It sucks, but that's just the way the world goes, and, you know. You could choose to read his work, and you could choose to ignore it. 
Like, you know, to me, Lovecraft kind of gets on my nerves, to be honest with you. Some of the ideas are super cool, like, with the made-up fucking, you know, deities and all that type of stuff. Like, and you never know. Like, the cosmos is something that I really think we shouldn't fuck with. It's, you know, like, it's a massive, massive vacuum of darkness and, like, legit, space is a fucking scary death trap. The fact that I am even making a video, speaking, moving my hands, have you ever actually thought how crazy it is that, like, hair grows? Like, I'm not trying to sound like a fucking stoned idiot, but, like, seriously, think about it. Like, why do we exist? That's why bands like Blood Incantation are around. But that's a tale for a different day. I really like Pustulence and their take on cosmic death metal as it's you know, not your typical jump into your spaceship, you know, and talk about whatever and whatnot. This is something that I feel like the lyrical concepts, you know, where you can look at it and be like, you know, oh, elder gods, I've heard this a million times. I'd rather listen to Morbid Angel. I get it. Like, I really do, like, because there's tons and tons of bands that go down the Lovecraft route, and there's some bands that that's their thing. Like, you know, every album is, like, based on fucking tentacle monsters and stuff, and unspeakable horrors. But that's the thing about weird fiction that you have to understand that it's supposed to be left to your imagination. Your imagination is the scariest part. It's why they don't show the fish in Jaws until pretty much more than halfway through the film is when you actually get a good look at the shark. You see it at the scene in the pond where it bites the guy's leg off and Michael falls in the water and whatnot. And then the mayor and them go to the hospital, and he's like, you're going to sign this paper, we're going to hire Quint to kill the shark. Blah, blah, blah. What does Jaws have to do with pestilence? Well, nothing really, but I don't know, it just popped up. But the birth of the beginning before the inception of the end, a slab of Australian cosmic death metal. I would say if you're a fan of the new Faceless Burial record... Definitely, you're gonna fucking dig this. I just found it to be very enjoyable from a guitar standpoint. The vocals are kind of stock death metal vocals, which there's nothing wrong with as long as they're used properly. And here, it works very, very well because it gives it that classic sound. And it works with the guitar playing and whatnot. It's not like... There's some ridiculous, like, fucking pitch-shifted gutturals. It's straight-up death metal vocals, and it's enjoyable. And, you know, before you know it, you'll be singing along, and, you know, it's not, like, super brutal fucking death metal. It's straight-up death metal. And, again, this is one of those releases, just like the Masochist one, it's really something that could have came out in the 90s, and you wouldn't fucking know. And I think that's awesome. Even with the artwork, like, this is something just very cosmic in its essence. And I just like, you know, like, you got the fucking planet in the background. This fucking crazy staircase up to this, like, skeleton mountain. We'll just call it Crystal Mountain, where evil takes its form. But just badass stuff all around here. I love the fucking cover art, seriously, so fucking much. And again, Rotted Life Records on a death metal fucking tear right now through the scene. Bands like Pustilence, Masochist. We have a new Incinerate Him on the way, which I am hyped on. I fucking love that band. But... 
definitely check out Pustilence, the birth of the beginning before the inception of the end, before it is gone. Check it out. Rotted Life fucking records. Thank you, Jason, for sending this my way. And thank you, Maniacs at Home, for watching. You fucking rule. Hail Satan.